Oh my god, Mother Nature is so simple. Um, I made a lot of videos on the denotation of what the term polarized is. By the way, <clears throat> there are two ways to draw a line. There's no such thing as a point or a line. There's only such thing as a point line. This is how a human draws a line, okay? Obviously so. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Here we have counter space. Over here we have space, the creation of space. But over here we have F and M. Force in motion, space, creation of space, and force in motion. Oh my god, it's that simple. Counter space. You want to see something? Oh my god, it's so simple. Let's look at a magnet here. You see that? Dielectric inertial plane right in the middle here. Either side, force in motion. You see that? That line right in the center there? Oh my god! Look at that, it's so simple. Right there. The point of counter space. If you take this magnet, and if you're able to cut it, and it's actually ceramic, you can't really cut it, but if you're able to cut it like a big hunk of salami, each little slice, if you made a thousand slices out of this magnet, each little slice would have its own dielectric inertial plane. It is self-centering. Why is it self-centering? Because it is counter space. It is the point of uh, inertia. Everything over here, force in motion. Force in motion. Mother Nature is divinely simple. She's not an insane crack whore like quantum mechanics and general relativity would have you believe. She's not. Point of inertia. Force in motion. Inertia and acceleration. Now here's something counterintuitive. As acceleration increases, motion decreases. What? That makes no sense. Now think about that. Pause to think about it. As acceleration, let's, let's just to call this the idiot term that we currently use, gravity. Okay? It's no different than dielectric acceleration, DA, dielectric acceleration. But our idiots, we call it gravity. Increasing acceleration equals decreasing force in motion. Do you get it now? That makes no sense. Increasing acceleration is decreasing motion. Oh my god, I get it now. Oh, Mother Nature is so simple. It's so simple. Why didn't they teach this crap to you in school? Because we don't get it. We're still living in the Stone Age intellectually, especially when it comes to field theory. Stone Age! Every branch of science throughout history, 50 years ago, 100, 200, 300, 400, no matter when you go, they all thought the crap was right. Today is no different. We're technologically advanced and we're intellectually freaking morons. Well, some of us are. Most of us are anyway. You don't understand a damn thing. You just don't. Space, just as Tesla said, and he was correct, has no attributes. Space is neither a field nor a force. It acts on nothing and it does nothing. Let's use a really simple, stupid analogy to make things really simple. I love little simple demonstrations. What are we talking about when we talk about inertia? Well, you saw the center of the magnet, right? Dielectric inertial plane. Oh, God, it's stuck to the table. Dielectric inertial plane. You saw that? That thin line right in the middle? Yes. Dielectric inertia. Everything over here is force in motion. Everything over here is force in motion. You're actually measured with a Gauss meter. It's very simple. They have the centrifugal point of divergence, max here, mediocre here, really tight here. You can see this underneath a ferro cell. I can't, yes, this tattooed fat asshole in front of you, well not in front of you, is the first person in the world to figure out how a magnet works and what magnetism is. What is inertia? What is force in motion? What is space? Let's just make it really, really simple. Let's see if you can figure it out. Inertia. The loss of inertia. Let's assume this is inertia. Let's assume, remember our uh, magnet? The dielectric inertial plane of the magnet? Right? Let's see if I can zoom out here. Let's zoom out. Dielectric inertial plane of the magnet? What happens with the loss of inertia? This is the dielectric inertial plane. Just assume that this is infinitely thin to the point of zero. What happens with the necessitated loss of inertia? Oh my god. That makes so much sense. What is the necessary byproduct of 
the loss of inertia. Do you see all these voids between these inertial points which are reciprocating across the middle? They're reciprocating to the center, reciprocating centrifugally, then returning centripetally, centrifugal, centripetal, divergence, convergence. What is happening as the loss of inertia occurs? Okay, we're releasing inertia. What happens? Oh, what is, what is between these points of reciprocating loss of inertia? Oh my god, that's space! You can't reify space as something that does something. It's like reifying a shadow. A shadow is not a subject. It is an attribute! What is a shadow? It is the absence of light. A shadow does nothing. Well, you could say, well, a shadow makes you cold. A shadow keeps you... A shadow is absence. Space is the posterior attribute of the loss of inertia. Oh my god, that kind of makes sense. It seems so logical. Why, yes, it is. All these reciprocating points of inertia, which actually are circular, you can see it underneath the ferro cell. So simple. The loss of inertia necessitates the creation. So I know it's no different than saying that uh, eating, you know, you feed a horse a giant bucket of something, it's going to take a big shit of something. It's the necessitated attribute of something else, a posterior principle which is defining itself in attribution. There is no such thing, here's the principle of the entire universe, there is no such thing as any principle that doesn't have an attribute. What do I mean by that? Light and illumination are an inseparable singular entity. Okay? You cannot differentiate out light from illumination. You cannot differentiate out inertia from the reciprocative loss of inertia. It's actually defined by equation I discovered 12 years ago. It's an expression 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. It is very simplex. It is very design, divine. I've proven it. Underneath the ferro cell, the actual geometry of magnetic reciprocation, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the phase shift of the poles, you have rarefaction on the North Pole and compression on the South Pole. I showed it to you in the seed experiments. Remember the seed experiments videos? This is no different. Think of this as infinitely small, the dielectric inertial plane of a magnet, as I just showed you prior. What happens with the loss of inertia as it must necessarily reciprocate? Space is a posterior attribute. What Einstein and general relativity has done is they reified the horse shit as having to do with the horse. No, it is the posterior attribute of the goings on, the actual attributional print, the actual attribution of the principle. What does it mean the attribution of the principle? It means there's no difference between defining light and what light does. Light and illumination. The Greeks call this the aoristos dias. The Aoristos Dias. Um, in the ancient Egyptians they call it Ahorismos. Is the indefinable attribute which has no quantity. It is only the attributional quality of what something does which is indifferentiate from what it is. It sounds really so complicated. I mean, you can spend thousands and thousands of pages of text talking about this principle alone, but it's just so simple. The loss of inertia necessitates the creation of something else, but you can't reify that something else, i.e. space, as something that does something. Space is neither a field nor a force. It acts on nothing and it does nothing. Okay? We can't reify a shadow as something unto itself. It's a posterior attribute of the absence of illumination. We talk about light and shadows. A shadow has no... This is the same thing with emptiness. Emptiness is nothing. There is no such thing as emptiness. It's a qualifier of something else. These are all human conceptual reifications. The huge ones. Space and emptiness. Neither one of these exist. Neither one of these exist. Something X is empty of Y. Okay? This is a qualifier. Space is a qualifier too. Space is the absence of inertia. It's the posterior attribute of the reciprocation of inertia. Neither space nor emptiness exist. They're illusions. They're the holographic 
projecta. They're the phantasms of existential existence. They talk about an atom being 99.9999% empty space, and then if all the space inside every atom was removed, the Earth would be something like the size of a marble or smaller. It'd probably be actually a lot smaller than that. But it's not space. It's the reciprocation of the dynamis inside of an atom which is releasing and reciprocating out magnetism. Magnetism, Faraday had it right. He didn't he never explained what a magnet was or what magnetism is. But he was so close and nobody has come closer uh, for those many, many decades ago than Faraday. He said that magnetism is the dielectric field. I don't know if you know who Faraday was. Most people do that are into field theory or electrical theory. They know who Faraday was. But he called it the dielectric field. Which is exactly what it is. The loss of dielectric inertia as expressed by force in motion as magnetism reciprocates from either side. You can see this underneath the ferrocell. You can see it. I wished every one of you people could hold a ferrocell in your hand and actually see. It's like less than one micron thin and yet you can see almost four inches of depth. The actual hypertrochoidal, the reciprocating processional hyperboloid, and that's copyright mine by the way, 2014. You know, the reciprocating processional hyperboloid that expresses itself necessarily as a, uh, as a hypertrochoidal pattern. Is simplex pressure mediation. I mean, as a little child, do you remember having a bubble wand in the end of it? Of the bubble wands, the really fancy one, they'd have a square hole and they'd have a round hole and they'd have like a triangular hole and you'd dip this crap in the bubble stuff. And of course, it doesn't matter which hole you blow it out of, blow the sun, <laughs> it doesn't matter which hole you blew, you'd end up with a round bubble, right? Pressure mediation, simplex. Matter if you're blowing the soapy film crap out of the square, the round, or the triangular hole, you can end up with a round bubble, right? You remember that crap as a child? Same thing with a magnet. Doesn't matter if this magnet is square, triangular, circular. There's all sorts of freaky ass shapes that a magnet can be cast into. But the field underneath the ferrocell will be as exactly as I predicted. Exactly the same. It is always the same. It has to be the same. It's no different than the old plumber's motto that the water flows downhill. It's simplex pressure mediation of a field. But a field has no quanta. Okay? There is no quantity in a field. This is what scares general relativity and quantum mechanics so much that they devised a bullshit term to replace ether. They're like, well, it's, uh, we're going to call it uh, quantum fluid. Ether is the giant evil word that these assholes will never use. It's just, it's the most evil word in the world to them. Just bring up the word ether. You can feel, you can hear their sphincter pucker. But the only way you really want to scare them and shut them the hell up, you just run into someone with their head just so full, it's just ready to pop. They think they're so effing smart, and yet they're so stupid. Just ask them like a child would, okay? Sir, can you define this one word? No! They will never define it. They might blow smoke up your ass or give you, uh, you know, just some sort of, and, well, it's too complex for you to, no, it's you don't understand what this word is. Everything in the universe is fields, and science thinks we're technologically advanced, although not that technologically advanced. But we're intellectually stupid. Okay, we've invented a whole lot of crap. Because we know how to recreate things, we know how a lot of things work, but we can't explain them. Okay, descriptions are not explanations. And everything in the universe is this, fields. Quantum mechanics, general relativity, and current science has never defined this word. Never an explanation for this word. This is how you scare the piss out of these assholes that think they're so smart. Just ask them to define this word. It's like, no, 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 no. You gave a description. I want an explanation, asshole. Explain this word. Okay? They can't do it. Not even to save their own life could they ever define this word. Explain it, excuse me. Anyway, thanks for watching and catch you later.